Hey everyone, so today we'll be talking about complex corners in terms of one corner after another and how to know whether where to maximize time and what we're thinking about as pro drivers and how we approach those sections. So today we're going to use turn six through turn nine at Circuit of the Americas. Here I've actually pulled up my pole lap from 2015 in the IMSA WeatherTech series. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to turn the volume up, play at full speed through this section. We'll start to break down what our priorities are, how I'm thinking about this type of section so that you can apply those thoughts to any racetrack that we go to that has these type of back-to-back -back corners where we may have to sacrifice a little bit. Alrighty, so we've kind of gone through this section and it really, you know, this whole section starts at the start of the S's truly, but there's a little bit of a break into turn six, so I started it from there. So talking about what's the most important part of this entire section, the most important part really is turn nine, being able to end up right about here maximizing our ability to open the radius and get back to full throttle as early as possible. So why is that? Because the run after turn nine all the way down to turn 11 is full throttle and it's all about being the fastest driver over the longest distance. So some drivers, and we've seen this a lot at Racers 360, specifically here at turn eight, will feel like they are over slow in the middle of turn eight. So they'll get back to throttle back in this area here and they might actually be faster than me from here until right about here. But then they're offline. They're not able to be full throttle through turn nine. And now they're going to lose all the way down to turn 11. So when you're thinking about the complex corners, we want to maximize the whatever gives us the speed for the longest distance. And then after we figure that out, it's about trying to work out how much speed we can roll in. So we're not losing time in the other corners without hurting ourselves through the whole rest of the corner. So this complex is all about getting to this point right here, all the way to the right to set up our radius to turn nine, try to feed in that throttle right about here. So we can try to be full throttle from just before this apex all the way through this next section. That's the most important part for me here. Everything else is about how do I set myself up to get there without losing too much time. So you can see here, we're really working backwards at this point. So you see how turn eight, I'm not sacrificing anything at all, really. I see a lot of drivers being all the way out to the left, but because we're trail breaking all the way in here, we're losing, we're not losing any time by not setting up. And what ends up happening is when you set up to the left over here, you have to overslow turn seven. So then to set up for eight, you're gonna be, those drivers are gonna be slower all the way from this point, all the way through here, all the way through here, all the way through here, until about this point, where if you set up for turn eight and you sacrifice for turn seven, there you'll probably be a little bit faster from here to maybe here, if that, you see how much shorter that distance is. So it doesn't really pay any dividends by sacrificing seven to be faster through turn eight because you're going to be faster for so much shorter amount of time. And that's the big thing to think about, being faster for longer periods of times and understanding where the longer distance is. That's what we really want to get into. So again, I've maximized my turn seven and I've maximized my turn nine. And sure, you might gain a little bit of time back on me in the middle of eight, but I'm going to gain that back and a lot more by setting myself up well through turn nine. So when we back this up and talk a little bit more specifics, this is a, a beautiful uh, point to talk about a corner entry corner and a corner exit corner. So turn seven is a total entry speed corner. I don't care where I get back to throttle because it's such a short square to full throttle that you're not able to make up for a lack of entry speed. So let's actually turn the volume back up here and take a listen when I get back to full throttle. So I'm only starting to actually pick up initial throttle right here. You can see way past the apex. Traditionally, this was an exit speed corner or traditional corner. You would be hearing the throttle coming in right about this section. You can see it's a good, you know, two, three car lengths later where turn nine, 
the exact opposite action, actually to throttle um, in an untraditional way before the apex, which is not what we want to see. So a great little insight into entry speed corners versus exit speed corners. Again, maximizing the distance of, of how long I want to be fast for. So I know that this little square to full throttle from here to here is not going to make up for the lack of entry speed I need to be able to get to throttle earlier. So it's about rolling that speed in. So now as we back this up again, going from the end of the corner to, sorry, the end of the section to the beginning, you'll see here now again, out of turn six, you could not sacrifice at all and run all the way to the inside, just letting the car be free out of here. You could do, you know, one of these. But then what's going to happen, you're going to overslow seven, you're going to be much slower all the way through seven, all the way into eight. And you might be faster from where I am right now to the entry seven. But again, that's not a very long distance. And that, that sacrifice is going to slow you so much more down in turn seven. And that's why we want to be able to sacrifice a little bit out of six. So you can see here, I'm no, long, no more than mid road here. And I could still work my way back to the right. I don't get perfectly back to the right. It's kind of, you know, seven eighths over there. So it's a little bit of give and take. But it's about just trying to be smooth and figure out where you're maximizing. That's the whole point of this whole section and working backwards. So if you look at a track map, you try to work out, okay, for the distances. And from here, what I want to do is figure out. So I know I want to end up right about here at the turn in point. So how much my goal here is out of six well how much speed can i get out of six how much track can i use and still make it back there so what i want to do is start conservative start along the inside start opening up a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more to the left until the point that i can no longer execute on my turn seven and then i know i'm over the limit we bring it back down a little bit same thing for turn eight. I know I want to roll that entry speed and not get back to throttle until I'm turning it back to the left. So what do I want to do to make sure I'm not overslowing? Here, I'm going to lighten up the brakes. I'm going to roll that speed, roll that speed until I start missing this little nook on the right here until my car starts drifting further out this way or I can't get back to throttle. Then I know where I'm over the limit. So I back it up a little bit. I execute on this. I know, hey, I'm at the limit through turn eight, but I'm still focused with my priority through turn nine. So to back this up and to talk about this, we want to have priorities as drivers in these sections. So in this coda, my priority is turn nine, getting a good exit through turn 11, and then bringing the entry speed and setting up for turn seven. Everything else is about not overslowing and being able to execute on those. So as a driver, we need plans, but we also need to experiment. Remember out of turn six, I want to use a little bit more road every lap until I make that mistake, until I no longer can execute on it. Same thing in turn eight. I want to bring in a little bit more speed every lap until I can no longer execute on that exit and then back it up a little bit. And then throughout the session, you're always playing with that limit. Can I bring a little bit more in? Can I bring a little bit more in? And that's how you make sure that as the grip of the track increases or decreases, you're continually defining the limit of the car. So that's been our Racers 360 breakdown on complex corners and how to tie them together, what our priorities are. Uh, thanks again for being a part of the channel. If you want personalized coaching, on a section like this through Coda to make sure you're executing and you, we know what your priorities are. We hope you'll consider our online personal coaching where you can work with myself, Memo Gidley, and many other pro coaches and pro drivers.